There's been mud on my soul. There's been anger inside me. There's still unforgiven deeds that now it's time to free. I've been trapped inside so long. Don't remember how to live. How much of life has passed me by as I slept inside my dreams. Oh yes, sip the waters too. Let them wash all over you. stand by my grave and weep i am not there i do not sleep i am the thousand winds that blow i am the diamond glints in snow i am the sunlight on ripened grain i am the gentle autumn rain as you awake with morning's hush i am the swift up flinging rush of quiet birds in circling flight i am the day transcending night do not stand by my grave and cry i am not there i did not die that's clear harner in the book gypsy don't cry i am not there in my grave i have transcended the night i have become or what i was before the spirit the immortal being so why cry because i am not there body humans have always the desire to become immortal but the mistake is that they are forgetting that they are already immortal and they want to make this mortal body into immortal dust thou art and to dust thou returnest says the poet this is not said of soul but of body what is the secret of immortality what is that alchemy the secret alchemy to become immortal that story of becoming immortal is known as amar katha the story of immortality the secret of immortality and it is said that the story was told by shiva to his consort parvati they show 
Shiva and Shankar are same. But we know the difference. But rather than discussing that point, we'll straight away come to Amar Katha. So what is this Amar Katha? Katha means story. What is this Amar Katha? It's quite famous. There are different versions of it. Deep in the mountains, Amarnath, the Lord of Immortality, Shiva, was about to tell the secret of immortality to his wife, Parvati. And he ordered that the vicinity should be vacant. Confirming that, he started relating the story of immortality, the secret of immortality to Parvati. He told Parvati that you keep saying hmm hmm and I will know that you are understanding the story I am telling you. Shiva closed his eyes and started narrating the story. And Parvati kept on saying hmm hmm but midway she fell asleep. And Shiva saw that. He said, you are sleeping? She said, no. For better concentration, I am closing my eyes. He says, okay. But in fact, she was sleeping. At the same time, there was an egg and a parrot came out of that egg. Some say pigeon. But a parrot came out. So Parvati fell asleep. But that parrot kept on saying, hmm, hmm. And Shiva felt as if it is Parvati who is saying, hmm, hmm. It's pigeon or parrot. But majority votes are in favor of parrot. When Shiva ended the story, he asked Parvati, Parvati, to re-narrate the story. But she was unable to do that. And then he felt, then who heard? Somebody was eavesdropping. And he understood that, yes, this parrot was listening to the story. Now anybody who listens to this secret would become immortal. So Shiva got angry. And decided to kill that parrot. The carrot, the parrot started running, flying. And it became so small that a woman was there sitting and she was yawning and it entered the mouth of that woman. That woman was the wife of Sage Vyas. Shiva came and said, come out. Vyasa explained, no use. He has already heard the story of immortality and the parrot is going to become immortal now. So better you go away. Then Sage Vyasa tried to convince the parrot to come out. He says, no, I will not come out. I don't want to get entrapped in this world. This is a world of sorrow, suffering, misery, attachments and maya. He kept on convincing him for 12 years. The parrot did not come out. At last, Vyasa prayed to Vishnu and Vishnu as Krishna came and with Krishna's counselling. Divine intervention. The parrot agreed to come out. By the time the woman had become pregnant and she had unbearable pain because that parrot was growing in her abdomen. But with one condition. Parrot said, I will come out. But since I would become Sage Vyasa's son, I am not going to get involved in this world. I would seek liberation, ultimate moksha immediately. Krishna said, okay, come out. And the parrot came out. And that parrot, that child was called Shukadev. Shuka means parrot. Sage, Shuka. There are various stories. This is one of the versions of the story. Another version is given in Mahabharata. One more version is given in 
Devi Bhagavatam. Another version is given in Skanda Purana. So there are different versions of the story. And this Shukadev was extremely powerful, celibate and tapasvi. And he did not want to get involved anywhere. The moment he came out, he was 12 year old. He started walking and running. I don't want to get trapped in the maya of this world. And the sage Vyasa tried to chase him. Wait, wait, come, come, stop, stop. He says, no, I am not going to stop. I am running. Tvam sarvabhu taridhayam munimana tosmi. That's a very famous verse. When sage Vyasa was shouting, stop, stop. Shukdev had no time to listen to him. But on part of Shukdev, all the trees which were there, they answered back. And the verse says, Tam sarva bhutaridayam. To such a Shukdev, we offer our salutation. Munimana tosmi. I had heard this verse when I was a very small child. In one satsang where they were describing this story in Bhagavat. So, there were women who were taking bath in the pond or lake nearby. When Shukdev passes, they are undisturbed. When, but when Sage Vyasa come behind him, they covered themselves. And Vyasa asked, I am such an old man and my son is so young. When he went, you were undisturbed. When I came, you are trying to become shy. Those nymphs, those women said, Your son is so pure, he is celibate, he is soul conscious. He is beyond the consciousness of the body. But you are already body conscious. So this is the story of Shukdev. It is later on showed that Shukdev is narrating Bhagavat to King Parikshit. These are all philosophical or scriptural stories, mythological stories, which we have been listening from since time immemorial. There are different versions. In Maharashtra, there is one place, Sangli, where there is one mountain between Atpadi and one more place. There is a cave. It is said that Shukdeva entered that cave and disappeared. That place is still there in Sangli district of Maharashtra. And people worship. Many other things are there. So what is the significance? Forget this all. Now come to the significance. So, the story of immortality means whosoever listens to this story becomes immortal. So that is the first point. The story of immortality is the story told by God Shiva when he comes on this earth. So Murli is the story of immortality. Whosoever listens to this Murli would become immortal. Not just here. Immortal in the sense, immortal for 2500 years. This is one part. Second, whosoever listens to the story becomes Shukdev. And he enjoys the womb for 12 years. Baba says, you will be in that golden womb for 2500 years. In golden age and in silver age. Third, Shukdev is somebody who is soul conscious. And his father Vyasa is somebody who is body conscious. Vyasa indicates one who writes and reads scriptures. Who follows the path of bhakti. So Vyasa means who is neck deep into scriptural knowledge. But in spite of scriptural knowledge, that knowledge has not made him soul conscious. He is still body conscious. While Shukdev is so pure, he has heard the story of immortality. And even Shiva tried to kill him, but he couldn't. Because the story is so powerful. The secret of immortality is so powerful. So Shukdev means body, con soul consciousness. So when you listen to Murli, you become soul conscious. And when you become soul conscious, you become free from all the attachments to this world. 
you are not interested in anything of this world you are interested only in one thing that is to bring welfare to this world he narrates bhagavatam to parikshit king parikshit who is about to die in a week who is a grandson of arjuna it is shown like that so forgetting the scriptural details and coming to the scrap crux of the matter amar katha is about becoming immortal amar katha is about becoming soul conscious amar katha is becoming focused this is the goal of life this is the goal of life this is not the goal of life amar katha is to is about listening to this story and to become holy swan as baba said in yesterday's murli holy swan means those who are clean those who are pure those who are stainless those who are very very there are different words five words baba used but more or less those words are similar saaf pavitra swachh shuddha whatever you call vedag nirvikari wiseless so this is the goal of the life is to become wiseless to become pure stainless so the more you listen to this story the more pure you become but it depends how you are listening to murli if you are listening like parvati and falling asleep in between and when you are asked what are you doing you say that i am listening for better attention with my closed eyes you will not become immortal so become a parvati but who listens to this story with the rapt attention the mind is totally engrossed in listening tava katha amritam this katha this story is like nectar ambrosia tapta jeevanam our life is burning we are ablaze the fire of vices is intense fierce kavibhiriditam this story has been sung and resung and glorified and eulogized by great poets and great men tapta jeevanam kavibhiriditam kalma shapaham the story removes the kalmash the blemish the stain the dents shravana mangalam just to listen to this story brings auspiciousness purita jana so listening so amar katha is about becoming amar about becoming immortal amar katha is about listening to god's knowledge with complete attention amar katha is become is to become pure baba said in yesterday's murli that's the goal of purity your goal of life is to attain complete purity and complete purity means first the purity of body the body is the temple and you are the statue of diamond body is the temple and you are the trustee of this body you have been given this body to take care of this body in a worthwhile manner second purity means non wandering mind wandering mind is impurity what is the direction given by bab dada for this mind man mana bhav attach your mind to me and or in world service so the second definition of purity is non wandering mind the first definition is cleanliness of body the third definition of purity is honesty honesty in service in service no selfishness in service no excuses in service no laziness in service don't do it as duty four things shouldn't be there 
ऑनेस्टी ऑल्सो अबाउट योर पुरुषार्थ ऑल्सो अबाउट योर एफर्ट सी द परसेंटेज एंड द फोर्थ डेफिनेशन ऑफ प्योरिटी इन यस्टरडेज मुरली इज प्योरिटी इज कॉन्टेंटमेंट प्योरिटी इज कॉन्टेंटमेंट वेन यू रिमेन कॉन्टेंट द अदर पर्सन रिमेन्स कॉन्टेंट देर इज अ डीप सेंस ऑफ सेटिस्फैक्शन देर इज नो हैवीनेस अबाउट सर्विस अबाउट कंपेनियंस अबाउट यू यूर सेल्फ सो दैट सेंस ऑफ लाइटनेस इज प्योरिटी Purity is to become lighter and lighter and lighter. Purity is the highest virtue. Purity is not so small. It's such a broad umbrella terminology. It's an umbrella under which so many things come. It is comprehensive. So Amar Katha is to become Amar by listening to this Murli. Each day's Murli should. get imprinted on your mind should leave a dent on your brain on your gray matters it should enter the cerebral cortex deeply it should not just stay on this skull let it enter deep let it penetrate and interpenetrate the ventricles the gray matter every neuron and create a new neuronal pathway of gyan that is purity that is gyan so one more question about amar katha is how should we listen to murli not definitely not like parvati who fell asleep midway but when you listen to murli first listen it with rapt attention what is needed is rapt attention undivided attention with full concentration second listen it with interest with curiosity oh what is going to come today listen it with joy who is talking to me who is sitting in front of me mahadev shiva is known as god of gods he has come and he is telling the murli i am shukdev <laughs> so you are shukdev and you are listening to the murli so listen with that and keep on saying hmm hmm <laughs> in between so that the other person knows that yes the what i am saying people are listening to otherwise many times i have seen that uh, when we give class the audience is just sitting without any expression on their faces <laughs> as if they sometimes i wonder whether they are understanding or not many times it happens no expression at all so baba says the dancer would perform well if the audience is receiving well if the audience is interested otherwise dancer will also lose the interest in dancing no cheers so when you listen to the murli let it be with rapt attention let it be with interest let it be with that curiosity oh oh ho who is teaching me who is telling me and when you listen also note down points so that you can revise them later on and try to revise the points within 24 hours each murli is filled with some very very powerful point very powerful points so you can catch those points you should develop that knack this technique that dexterity you should become skillful this knack of extracting points from murli everyone must become expert achieve expert is in this so that you can remember entire murli you can revise re revise in your own mind you become the embodiment you come out with some practical plan out of that murli then what else to do while listening to murli feel as if you are experiencing that the moment baba talks about golden age enter into the golden age and experience it whatever point comes become the embodiment 
listen to that murli with the feeling that this is the assembly of holy swans and god has come yes baba said in yesterday murli and feel that atmosphere the presence the beauty the ecstasy the melody the divine atmosphere this will create a change within you what else while listening to murli that's an amar katha try to listen without moving your body the body moves the mind moves movement of body is movement of mind sit in one comfortable position and keep the aim or make a resolution that now i will not move hands may move if you are writing but otherwise keep it stable another thing don't get distracted because there are so many distraction some mobile something something will happen so remain undistracted while listening to murli that will again come in rapt attention what else while listening to murli we are receiving jewels these are jewels these are not ordinary things who is telling fill yourself with that self respect who is talking to me what i am listening who are these people who are sitting here with that higher consciousness it's only for me it's specially for me what else yes any last point it's a food gyan is food it's my personal meeting it's a love letter what else it's a song i'm listening to it's a divine song the celestial song it's geeta in the morning geeta throughout the day bhagavat so if you want to love the your love for baba would be revealed only if you have love for murli if you say that i love baba but i am tired and bored of this murli again and again the same thing red getting repeated baba will not like that i am coming from such a long distance baba has lot of pride he will always ask in murli you okay from where you have come america you have come from canada then he will reveal who knows who has come from the farthest distance and then with pride he will reveal i you must have heard that multiple times he is so he enjoys this statement so much you will not see such a teacher who is coming from such a far off place for you people hmm and murli means it's a divine conversation in first person god is saying i i i no other scripture is there where such a thing is there only geeta is the only scripture which is spoken in first person i i i do this i tell this come to me leave aside everything that is the only scripture where such a thing is described leave aside every other thing so every version is million dollar worth so this is such a precious thing so amar katha means to listen to shiva who is and become the embodiment of satyam and shiva mind beautiful sundar om shanti